But what we have to say about China, in fairness to China and its leadership, is if I'm not mistaken, they have made more progress in addressing extreme poverty than any country in the history of civilization. Okay, so they've done a lot of things for their people. To meet the most ambitious goal of the Great Leap Forward, Mao told the Chinese that production of steel had to double in one year. In a secret report, the party later admitted the full extent of the calamity. Their own figures showed that over 20 million had died from the famine. It was almost certainly more. The new graves in the burial grounds confirmed that the Great Leap had failed. The noise of gunfire rose from all over the center of Peking. It was unremitting. On the streets leading down to the main road to Tiananmen Square, furious people stared in disbelief at the glow in the sky, listening to the sound of shots. The troops have been firing indiscriminately, but still there are thousands of people on the streets who will not move back. There was confusion and despair among those who could hardly credit that their own army was firing wildly at them. Many were bystanders, perhaps naive about the savagery of the situation. Indeed, it was hard at times to grasp that this army was launching into an unarmed civilian population as if charging into What's battle. your view of China today? Do you believe China represents an existential threat to the American worker? No, I wouldn't use the word existential threat. You know, I think China uh, is a country that is moving, unfortunately, in a more authoritarian way in a number of directions. Uh, we would have hoped that they would move toward a democratic more democratic form of government and moving in the opposite direction. Um, and they are a country that vigorously protects their own interests. But what we have to say about China, in fairness to China and its leadership, is if I'm not mistaken, they have made more progress in addressing extreme poverty than any country in the history of civilization. Okay, so they've done a lot of things for their people. Uh, their economy now is struggling. Uh, but I think it is absolutely possible for us to have a positive working relationship with China. What I said back then and what I believed is that the function of permanent normal trade relations with China was pretty obvious to me. It is a legislation, trade agreement written by large profitable corporations who wanted cheap labor in China. So what they wanted it was a trade agreement which made it easier for them to shut down in this country and then hire people in China back then for 50 cents an hour, a dollar an hour. Wages have gone up there a bit. But clearly much lower wages, much lower wages than in the United States. That was what that trade agreement was about. And it has cost us many millions of jobs, as has NAFTA. So what I said then and what I say now is trade is extremely important, but you cannot have unfettered free trade written by large corporations and their CEOs. You need trade agreements that are designed to work for working families for family-based agriculture, not just for the owners of profitable corporations.